just thank you guys for coming back to uh, another week of Here Now Together. And uh, this week you're going to remember Roger Duguay from um, an interview that we did, well, now it was a few months ago, Roger. Uh, last year. Last year. Yeah. And uh, really, a lot of that interview could have had his wife, Jeanette, here. Because uh, really, a lot of it concerned you. And, well, in the sense of yeah. Yeah, yeah. bringing Roger and right. into uh, right. the faith, uh-huh. into Christianity. And uh, your influence, and I'm, I'm pretty sure it was your mother's influence as well, was that? Or was it a sister? I forget exactly. Well, uh, in our family, yeah. there's... Uh, your sister and her husband was born again okay. first. Okay, okay, that is how it so went. That's how first. Yeah, okay. And then you mentioned other family members who had and gotten then, saved. Yeah. yeah. So uh, we're sort of um, going backwards a little bit today because uh, Roger's going to kind of share with us a, a very intense uh, story. And for a part of it, he wasn't even really aware of what was happening while his wife was sort of witness to a miracle, really. And um, they're going to tell us about um, that miracle. You know, I mean, there's no greater miracle than being born again. We all know that. Uh, But there's time to testify about that. And then there's time to testify about the good works of God that are done here today in the land of the living, the Word of God says. And so that's what we're going to testify about today. Roger's going to testify and Jeanette, they're they're going to testify about this um, this incredible miracle that happened. I just um, before that, uh, I just would like to ask Jeanette to sort of give us a brief uh, understanding of how she found the Lord before we go into what happened in Roger's life. Uh, well, I think I had a decision to make, mm. and um, I really didn't know it. I think what I started to question, I wanted to know what God had to say about Mm. uh, the situation. Yeah. And because I had been taught differently, and so I started to say, Lord, I don't want to know what man has to say. I want to know what you have to say. And that got me seeking and asking questions. And uh, um one thing led to another, and finally I had a Bible at home, which yeah. I always kept in the bookcase, but that was just a decoration yeah. to show we were religious. Yeah, <laughs> that's right. <laughs> so, <laughs> anyway, uh, I was supposed to have a surgery, and because I wasn't ready, um, I went into the hospital, I woke up the next day for the surgery I had the flu I was really sick yeah. so they sent me home mm. <laughs> and said we'll book you for two weeks from now and I said okay and then they um, booked me two weeks I went in slept overnight when mm. I woke up I was congested they said we can't do the surgery and my yeah. doctor said do you think we God, had a Jewish doctor yeah do you think God is trying to tell you something and wow now, so I didn't book an, an, another appointment, but yeah. I had to deal with God whether I, it was okay for me to get this surgery until I had peace. And yeah. uh, the pastor told me how to have a conversation with the Lord, and so wow. I did. And yeah. then I had peace, and I went in, had the surgery, and I was fine and never regretted it. I think God knew that I wasn't ready. Yeah. At that time, so I thank him for <laughs> making sure I was ready. But yeah. all that got me seeking, and I opened. I would open the Bible then, and because it was just a hunger to know. I'd heard things, and then some things were a sin, and then I'd hear it's not mm. a sin, and then I got kind of confused. So I said, "I want to know what yeah. God has to say, not man." And Amen. So um, I started opening the Bible and reading it, and mm. it's like. I was amazed. It's like God opened my eyes, and I'm thinking, oh, I didn't know that was there. And there was a lot of things that became real to me. And and sometimes I would tremble inside just reading the Bible, and I I was excited, and I wanted to learn more. And 
That's when then my sister being born again had mm -hmm. shared about this church and uh, she had become born again. And mm. um, so th it was funny because when they were building this church, mm. I would drive by and I think, oh, that's all we need in town, another church. <laughs> <laughs> it was the very one. It was a pick off the church. <laughs> okay. we're yeah. And then, and then after, after it was <laughs> built, I would drive by and I'd see Sunday night, and then they're all at church again. Yeah. I think who'd want to go twice? Yeah. <laughs> Sunday yeah, yeah, once yeah. was enough. And, yeah. Um, so anyway, when I was seeking and asking questions, I ended up going there also, and he mm. gave me some wise uh, words and. He's the one who told me how to pray to the Lord. Yeah. And so I decided to go to the service. And I began to understand pretty quick why people went twice. Mm, <laughs> yeah. Because yeah. when you went there, it was <laughs> loving. It was, yeah. I saw people worship yeah. with such love and dedication. And yeah. I was really amazed. Yeah. And I got very hungry, and I just kept going. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, that's when I had given my heart to the Lord. Okay. And, yeah. And, and I'd go even twice on Sunday. There you go. If I could. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, Roger told us in, in his testimony that he came to the Lord kicking and screaming. <laughs> oh, <laughs> Every okay. inch of the way. Yeah. <laughs> but they make for the best Christians in the end. Oh, you know? yeah. Oh, yeah. The he ones was, that fight it all the way. Oh, yeah. He was not happy. He was born again. Yeah, that's what he told us. <laughs> he was and, uh, pretty angry. Yeah. yeah and he told us about a... if there was a Bible in the room, he oh, uh, yeah. was quite upset about that. Yes. Until yes. he had his own major heart change. And, yes. But what we're going to hear next is... Um, about, well, your death, in effect. Roger, uh, you go right ahead. Well, uh, maybe just before that. You go ahead. Right after mm -hmm. my first experience that I had that I shared last year yeah. about the encounter with the Bible, and mm -hmm. I wanted to destroy her mm -hmm. Bible. Mm -hmm. And uh, that was the first experience that I had with God, and I was not looking for God. Yeah. But the second one, it was up in three months after that experience. I was in the car going to work. Yeah. And then uh, she had told me something the night before. And I was kind of disturbed. Mm. So uh, I wasn't going to any churches. Mm. Uh, so in the car, uh, uh, I know exactly where I was between Milton and Georgetown on the fifth side road between the third and the fourth line. Mm -hmm. I know exactly where I was. Mm -hmm. And I said, God, I, I, this is what I prayed. I, uh, the, pr the prayer that I had learned uh, as was growing up, didn't, for some reason, it, that's not going to work here. Mm -hmm. And then I just said, I, I only spoke 13 words to the Lord. I said, God, my life is in the shamble. I need you in my life. Mm. When I, well, when the last word, life, life was not out of my mouth, the car got filled. Mm. And I knew it was peace. Wow. I had never had peace. I was a 40 years old now, yeah. almost 40 years, maybe yeah. a month before my 40th birthday. Mm. And then, and then after I, I, the, the peace, and then the the car got filled, mm. and then it went into you in my mouth, through mm. my mouth, it went inside. Wow! And but I didn't know that Jesus was the Prince of Peace. Yeah, I yeah. didn't know that yeah. at the time. Right. Because I said my life's in a shambles, so yeah, I need you. So, <clears throat> and after, like, kind of whatever is in the car dissipated, and I said, God. This is between you and I. Nobody needs to, to know this. This, yeah. is, this is a secret. <laughs> I, I didn't know what I was saying. Yeah. <laughs> I, I was always uh, I, I was always somebody did something. Mm. If you tell me something, well, that's it. It stays there. Yeah. So yeah. this was between God and I. And, yeah. And then I forgot about it. Like, you know. Mm. And I I had no idea. I had invited God to come in. Yes. Well, this is God. Yes. But I didn't know anything else. Yeah. Uh, so I did, wasn't saying, but members of her family yeah. was noticing something I wasn't. Yeah. So they would ask her. Mm. 
And then I don't know how long it took for her to initially. I said, I don't want to talk about it. I remember, I remember I said to God, it's between you and I. Yeah, that's so true. I didn't know you're supposed to share. Yeah. Because I still wasn't going to any churches. Yeah. And then I guess some more time went by and then and they would go and like uh, her, uh, your mom also. Mm -hmm. And there was another sister that was born again. Uh, Francine. Hmm? No, no, no. Okay, your mom and then your sister Georgette and her husband. Hmm. So they would or again ask more questions, and yeah. they would say, "Did you not know?" They would say, "There's something. Something is different about Roger." Hmm. Uh, we, I guess they were. I, I didn't see anything. Yeah. But as far as I'm concerned, I wasn't changing. Yeah. But I guess they were. They were seeing something, obviously. Yeah. And then uh, she came to me and asked me another time. Should I? And then I told her, "Yes, I did." Wow. So. Were you shocked? Mm. She was not happy. No? Nope. Because you hadn't told her. No. Was that it? No. The uh. reason that he, his life was in shambles is because yeah. he, uh, when I became born again, yeah. he was, I'm saying, really, really not happy. Yeah. And, yeah, it was very, very rough. Spiritual persecution. Yeah. Sure, sure. I would walk in and he would be, you know, really angry and yeah. throw the Bible out and all that. So yeah. after seven years, I think I oh. couldn't take it anymore. Oh, like yeah. I, I just finally said, God, I give up. I can't do this. Yeah. You know, <laughs> I don't care what happens to me. I just can't take yeah. it anymore yeah i said you take him i don't want to yeah <laughs> <laughs> so i just released him i guess unknowingly yeah, yeah. we just said here you go God. yes and, uh, and i finally got the nerve because i i was kind of scared so yes. i finally got the nerve to say you know i want out yeah i believe in marriage but i'm yeah. dying here. yeah yeah so she told me so, that after yeah. the first experience okay and god had set me free from something yeah if she, if I would not have had the first experience, I don't know what would have. Well, been. I remember the first. You were frozen. Yeah. Yeah. I remember right. that first experience. So he sets me free from uh, something. That hate towards yeah, oh, him. Yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. I mean, yeah. Oh yeah. yeah. I remember you saying that. Really? Like, because I like I've never I was never one to bother people. Yeah. My philosophy was in life: I don't bother you. Yeah. So don't bother me. Don't bother me. me. Yeah. If you bother me, then you'll be sorry. That's yeah. how I live by yeah. it. Yeah. I never started anything. No. No. I didn't believe in borrowing people. So I, no. I live like that. So I'm not borrowing you. So don't borrow me. Yeah. So that's... And then <clears throat> yeah. she said that, well, before I was all... some I don't know. There was something in me It was dark. Yeah. Because I would make plan how I would kill people. Yeah. You know, so... Yeah. Like... If mm -hmm. that, that mm. it was, it was, you know, thinking, if she leaves me, well, then I'll go and kill some of her family and then her yep. mom and then I'll kill her. Yep. I knew that. That's why I was afraid. But she knew that. Oh, yeah. But I got to a place where but it was like, mm. there I'm was falling some, apart here. I got yeah. an evil do spirit. That, yeah. Oh, yeah. And the need for control. I mean, because, yeah. I mean, let's be real. When, uh, even as a Christian, when my wife deeply found the Lord, and started really enjoying his presence, I even found that threatening. I did, because yeah. I was a Christian, but I wasn't used to the depths that she right. was going into yeah. in the Lord, and how deeply she was enjoying his presence and, mm -hmm. and loving. That's a, that's almost like a threat to a guy. You're like, yeah. <laughs> uh, I know one thing, I'm not in control. You know, And if you've got any idea that you're in control of your wife, yeah. you know, well, that just begins to leave. Right. Because and but in the end, I mean, what's better than to have the Lord in control of the yeah, both yeah. of you? Yeah, Nothing's better yeah, than yeah. that. Exactly. You know. So, yeah. but understanding that, I think, as a man, <clears throat> is a hard thing, because we we want to control and trap what we have that we love so much because well, we don't want it to go. You have to remember. Yeah. Yeah. That's right. Uh, you come from a you know, uh, how does the saying goes. Uh, you are a product of your environment. Yes, yes. Well, you have to remember, I grew up, I lost my mom when I was yes. four, my dad when I was nine, yeah. and then my grandma, my grandmother, which we were always together. That was your world, And then yeah. 12, and then my girlfriend when I was 15. Yeah. So the four people yeah. that was the closest to me, yeah. I lost them. 
So. Yeah. Oh, that is. Listen, my father, my own dad, lost his mom when he was five, and uh, so did my father-in-law. I believe she wasn't. Maybe he was a little older than that, but the impact, mm-hmm. and then in that, in getting married, your wife almost is fulfilling that role of not just wife but also mother. Oh yeah. And in 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 a way, and and then wow, you've you know you're developing a dependency that's wow, mm-hmm. it's a very big. Well, there, there is a lack see. somewhere. Yeah. Oh yeah. If your mom is not there. Oh yeah. Your is not there. Oh, yeah. There will oh, be yeah. a lack. Yeah. Yeah, I mean that even gives us more grace to folks who, you know, had no choice but to grow up in broken homes. I mean, understanding their situation because, you know. Then I, when I met Jeanette, and then uh, her mom was in Guelph, living in Georgia, so we spent an hour mm. drive. Mm. So we would spend the Christmas Eve at her mom. Mm. So the house was full. Mm. Everybody came on Christmas Eve. Yeah. So the house was full. Yeah. You have to think now. There's 13 kids and their wife oh. and their husband plus the kid. So oh. and but yeah. I <laughs> must like be a big to, house. Well, just it was to be able big. To, it was just crowded. It was yeah, crowded. Just crowded. <laughs> so yeah. very crowded. And for some reason, it didn't look. Yeah. It was fine to everybody. Yeah. Well, so happy. I yeah. had never experienced that. Okay. So I would uh, observe. Yeah. And I would observe the the interaction between the mother and the daughters yeah. and the mothers and the son. Yeah. But I didn't know what it was. Yeah. I was just observing. Yeah. And I was and I was thinking, oh, they look like they're having a, a, a great time. Yeah. I didn't know what that was. Yeah. So one day I'm I'm a two line dye maker in Mississauga, so I'm working on the milling machine. I, I'm not side uh, and I said to, to the Lord, I said, Lord. You know, at uh, Christmas time, I said, uh, I see the the children, or, you know, when they're growing up, they have their family. They go to their, well, I, I was talking pertaining to her, yeah, because yeah. Um, it says, they go there, and, and he seems to have a good time. I said, I don't know what that is. Yeah. So, and then after that, after I finish, I continue uh, yeah. uh, back on the main machine, and I came home. I did something uh, that was not normally I would do. Mm. I said, I'm going to go and lay down. I don't know why I did that. Mm. Uh, but obviously the Holy Spirit was leading me to do that. So yeah. I, I lay down, I fell asleep, and I had a dream. Mm. And the dream I had was I was uh, in the front of the Catholic church yeah. that I had gone with my dad when I was young. Mm. And I had... The second in the family was three brothers and one sister, mm. Roland, Ralph, and me. Mm. And then Ralph was kind of teasing the older people. So I went to him and I said, Ralph, stop doing that. And then I got up the step, opened the door of the church, mm. and there was nobody. The church was empty. Mm. So I closed the door and I walked toward the front to the altar, like in a Catholic church, there's yeah. an altar in the front. So, and then when I got that to the front, uh, and then I turned around and looked toward the back, and then the the, the front door of the church opened. And then somebody comes in. I looked at him. Well, he looks like my grandfather on my mom's side, mm. and we were like this. Yeah. And then we look at each other, and for some reason, just like two people that I haven't seen in a long time, we started running. Yeah. And then we embraced, and then we both fell on the floor. Yeah. But the feeling. Yeah. I have never felt that. Yeah. Has, it's it, it's hard to describe. Yes. And then the next day, I I share that with Jeanette after when I when I yes uh, before supper and then yeah the next day I went to work and I'm working on the milling machine. I, I would talk to the Lord when I yeah uh, I, I this and I said I said Lord I said uh, I had this dream and then I saw my grandfather. Yeah. Well, he says a. Hey, it wasn't your grandfather. I says he took. He says I took the, the appearance the of appearance. your grandfather because oh. you were familiar with him. Yeah, you had this connection with him. He yes. says it, in reality it was me. Wow. And then he says, now you know how it feels at Christmas. Yeah. Oh, isn't that isn't that something? It's like. Yes. Wow. Yeah. I mean, this is God healing your heart. Yeah. That's beautiful. Yeah. That's an so, awesome story. I remember sharing that, and and the people would say. 
Well, who are you? If, uh, I'm not, I'm not, I don't understand what you're saying. Yeah. And they would say, how can you have the experience? I don't know. I just talked to the Lord during the day. And yeah. Then, oh, yes. You know, I wasn't sad. They were just telling him I yeah. hadn't experienced that then. Isn't that, uh, that, look, I have that same opportunity. I sometimes I'm an hour and a half getting into work, just, just driving in, an hour and a half back. And I mean, I've had very open conversations with the Lord in the, in those times, you know. And there's you don't have to waste a moment. You know, you think, well, I'm bored. Well, you don't have to be. Well, if you engage the Lord, you won't be bored for long. <laughs> you know, it's amazing what, what he can do in your heart. I don't know, maybe it'll help somebody. Yeah. Um, when I went to the Pentecostal in Georgetown, two yeah. and a half years after my first experience, mm -hmm. I didn't go to any churches, I just read the Word. Mm -hmm. By the time I went to church, I had read the Word at least five or six times from Genesis wow. to Revelation. Wow. Yeah. I, I would start Genesis, finish Revelation, and I would start, yeah. finish, start, finish. I, I don't know, at least six times before mm -hmm. I went to church. Mm -hmm. So... When I went to church, uh, it was a Pentecostal church. I, I had not, that was, yeah. before it was a Catholic church, so it was, yeah. it was quite different. Oh, yeah. <laughs> they have quite different service. Yes. And I enjoy really the the service. And then I came home. Um, this is what changed, probably kept me uh, connected to God. Yeah. Uh, the Holy Spirit put that in me. Mm. I walked in after uh, uh, I think it was in the evening. I can't remember which one. Mm. And I walked in. I said to Jeanette, I said, look, it says we have a dining room and we have a living room and then we have a kitchen. We have, go down there, we have a family room and yeah. then we have a small bathroom and then we have another small room yeah. and then we have bedroom. I says, could I take a room and make it my prayer room? Yeah. Was the Holy Spirit? Yeah. I, I'd been in church for three or four months. That's it. Yeah. And then she says, yes, go. So I, I yeah. and then I made that. So I've always had a prayer room since yes. 1992 yeah. Yeah. when I started. So yeah. it doesn't matter where I move. I yeah. have to have my prayer room. Good for you. So if I'm, if I'm not on vacation, yeah. I, I'll go every day. So yeah. I spend time with the Lord. I read the word, pray. So you make that important. So, well, the Holy Spirit gave me that idea. Yeah, yeah. And I believe that's what uh, grounded me and mm. stay like hungry. Yeah. Well, they tell a story about Billy Graham that he uh, he had a prayer room and, and times when he would go into it, he would ask, no, please don't come get me if the phone rings or whatever. Yeah. Just please just leave me in the room and I'll come out. And uh, so, you know, in, in the circles he moved in, he actually got a call from the president one day. And his wife had to say, look, I can't go get him. <laughs> she said, we have a, I, there's a rule. If he's in the room, I can't go get him. And he said, what room, you know? Well, his prayer room, you know. So she wouldn't uh, go and interrupt him even for a call from the president, you know, because. Well, God that's, is higher. Yeah, yeah. God is higher. <laughs> you know, I mean, can yeah. you imagine? Yeah, you know, I mean, the there's, president's he's boss. the president. Yeah, he's the real president. <laughs> So, um, yeah, so that's I, I defending that room in that space is defending your walk with God, yeah, you know. So, so why I wouldn't think you for me? That's what um kept me, yeah, close to God, yeah. So, I think that's what has made a difference for me, yes. Okay, I mean, I'm, I'm grace grateful yeah. for the Holy Spirit to. Gave me that idea. Yes. I first Amen. Started going Amen. To the church back in 1992. Mm. Mm -hmm. And now your story. How do you go from that to the story well, where you? In 2019, we went to Ontario, and we were at a sister. Uh, she has a condo, so I don't know what happened, but well, in the morning, one morning, she found me in bed. I wasn't breathing, so mm -hmm. you know, I don't know what time because I don't I, like as far as the natural. I don't remember anything, mm. but I know in the spiritual, mm. uh, Jesus came. Uh, mm. The first things he said to me is the greatest call, mm. calling is to be 
a pro a Jesus a prof Jesus prophet, mm. the prophet of Jesus. Mm. That's what he kept saying. The greatest calling. Prophet of the Lamb. Prophet of the Lamb. Mm. Is that how you said that? I don't, I don't know. I don't know. I don't remember. Prophet. So yeah. Mm. yeah. That's the first I, I words he said. I don't so know that in, in the physical because I don't remember. And that's when you came, were coming back out of. No, I don't know what time that well, happened. That, this would have been probably going into the third week when oh, he wow. was. I don't know what when that happened. Yeah. Just I, 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 I don't have any yeah. recollection in the natural. Yeah. From my body, memory, mm. or or in my mind, that that's just. Mm. And the Lord came, and I knew. I knew that from my spirit man. I didn't know that naturally. Mm. I knew that I had been uh, interceding for 48 hours straight. Mm. Your spirit doesn't sleep. Yeah, mm. That's what he said. So, yeah. and, and, and Jesus said to me, do you know what you were doing? I says, I don't have any idea. He says, you were interceding. Yeah. And then he said, um, like he pointed his finger at me, he says, this is the priority that I want you to have. Mm. And he said, I want you first mm. to pray for the family of God, mm. and then you pray for your family. Mm. And I believe that's for every believers. Yeah. That's not only for me, but Amen. that's what he said to me. First, you pray for a family of God, and mm. then you pray for your family. Mm. Amen. And then wow. that's... Uh, and then after that, uh, I guess I, I guess I started. I don't know. You started. But I feel just I know for for two weeks I don't remember anything. Isn't that something? Nothing. Well, you don't remember more than that. It's almost yeah. three weeks yeah. that you don't remember. Right. Any time you're out and you come back and you don't have brain damage, uh, or anything know, like nothing, that. Nothing. That's amazing. Yeah. I've, That's a miracle. My memory was not affected. No, because when you starve yeah. the brain. Well, I think the guy that was doing oxygen. The, yeah. The CPR, yes. I think God used him to oh, definitely. keep the, you know, something going. Oh, definitely. To going to my brain. It's God. And I mean, I'm just going to re, uh, just let folks know again that if you haven't seen the, the previous um, interview that I did with Roger, and uh, go check it out. And and you, you, you're going to find at the end of this, um, at the end of the show down below in the YouTube where they show you all the different uh, things concerning the show, you'll find Roger's email, just like before. And if you're looking to get in touch with him to do some ministry work, because he does that, he, uh, I mean, I, while we were just talking before we started into this, and he's still doing many Bible studies throughout the week. And if you'd like to be added to that well, list, I, I still do personal ministry and personal it ministry, is yeah. Or inner healing, yeah. Oh, yeah. So just get in touch with them, and if we get an email uh, for Roger, we would just pass that right along to you, Roger, for any ministry in the area. So, uh, yeah, we wish you the best. Thank you so much, you guys, for coming and sharing this. 